Amen. My God bless you, saints. If you have your Bibles with you, um, and you're willing and physically able, turn with me to the book of Proverbs. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31. I'm just going to read a few verses for you. Proverbs 31. And here in my, I'm starting with verse 27. Here in my friends, how New International Version records God's word. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. In verse 29 says, many women, do, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. You may be seated, my friends, in the awesome presence of our God. You know, um, growing up on the south side of Chicago, in our neighborhood, we had our shares of scrapes and, and scuffles and disagreements. Uh, uh, those things happened, and depending on the disagreement that was taking place, oftentimes it, it may not even come to a physical altercation. All right. Uh, uh, it was almost as if we may be able to work it out, but but uh, in the neighborhood, and some of you may have grew up this way, I don't know how it is now, but uh, uh, there was a code of conduct, if you will, in our neighborhood when it came to fights and, and, and disagreements. In other words, there were some do's and some don'ts. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, there was an understanding, a universal understanding, if you will, that, that was recognized by everyone in the neighborhood. And, right. and everyone knew that if you violated this don't, mm -hmm. there will be repercussions. All right. And surprisingly, this don't came down to two words. Two words meant you violated this don't. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could steal some from with some, some, someone in the neighborhood. You, you could cuss them out in the neighborhood. You could probably get away with it. But when you said these two words, well, it was on. All right. And folks would have to hold you back. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you what those two words were? Mm -hmm. Your mom. <laughs> Maybe I feel different. That's how it was. It's not. If you were in a heated disagreement with someone in the street or on the street in the neighborhood, and, 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 and it probably would not escalate. I said it could, it could de escalate. But if that person had the nerve to say to you, your mama, mm -hmm. those were fighting mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. And they were basically saying, whatever things I said to you, mm -hmm. it applied to your mama. Mm -hmm. And you got ready to fight about that. Now, now I, I know all y'all did, but that's how we did. All right. All right. Even if they had not said anything negative or derogatory yet, <laughs> just by saying your mama, they were saying, if we think of something negative or bad or nasty later, it applies to your mama. And that was grounds to fight. Because the truth be told, St. Paul, we cared about our mamas. And I'm not making up to think about it. They can say your daddy, your grandmama, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your niece, your nephew, they can say all that, and we okay with that. But when they said your mama, they crossed the line, and it was on. And so today, my friends, St. Paul, those on the line, as we honor and celebrate our mothers, our grandmothers, our godmothers, on this great and awesome Mother's Day, I don't want to get you upset with me, but today I want to talk about your mama. All right, man. In today's text, we just read in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, we know, is a, a book of wisdom. Yes. It tells us how to live our lives. Mm -hmm. And this was largely, not exclusively, but largely written by King Solomon. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the end of Proverbs chapter 31, mm -hmm. we see another author, King Lemuel. Mm -hmm. Scripture.
scripture does not tell us who this King Lemuel was, but, but one thing we know about King Lemuel is that he had a smart mom. Right. And the reason why I can confidently say that King Lemuel had a smart mama yeah. is because she taught him how to recognize and appreciate a good wife right. and a good mama. Right. It's almost as if King Lemuel's mother was providing a job description for this woman. All right. And King Lemuel, being a good son, he took it all in, he received it all in, and then he wrote it all down mm -hmm. in a proverb all right. to share with you and I. Right. Because he knew, or he did not know, but he somehow figured it would still apply to everyone. Mm -hmm. And somehow, my friends, through the guidance of the, whole guidance of the Holy Spirit, he knew that we would be at risk of getting out, uh, missing out on what a good mother or a good wife would be. Mm -hmm. And so, St. Paul, as we begin to go into this morning's text and work our way through, I see King Lemuel, he's talking about this mama. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he tells me is that she has finesse. That church said finesse. Finesse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you read chapter 31, he's already provided a broad description of a good mama. Yeah. But now he lets us know that this sister has finesse. Mm -hmm. well, and when we think of someone with finesse, we think of someone, of, we envision a person who has skill. Who, we envision someone who is able to take a difficult task, do it well, well. all while making it look easy. All right. Well. All right, all right, come here, come here, let me break it down. In 1980, uh -huh. I remember this night, uh -huh. I was sitting on my sofa watching the NBA playoff game. Uh -huh. I was in high school, and I was braiding my hair. You have no pastor say I go hair. <laughs> and I was going through plaques in my hair. Uh -huh. But as I was watching this NBA playoff game between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Philadelphia 76ers, I watched this guy, you, you all know by the name of Julius Irving, Dr. J. Dr. J was driving to the basket on the right side, and, and he was immediately met by the Los Angeles Lakers player by the name of Mark Landisberg. Landisberg was 68. Dr. J, Dr. J jumped in the air and curved his body around this defender. And then, I'm not making it up. He then went, while holding the ball and still in the air, he went underneath the basket. Uh -huh. And when he went underneath the basket, he was then met by Lakers center Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who was 7'2". But while he was still in the air, Dr. Jake went underneath the basket and did reverse layup. Mm -hmm. And the crowd went crazy. Uh -huh. And I was sitting on my sofa. I about lost it when I saw him. Dr. J that night took a very difficult task. He made it look easy, and he made it look good. Yeah. That is what finesse is. Yeah. All right. yeah. 40 years later, I still thank God for you two, because I can see that move every time, I, anytime I want it. <laughs> That's what King Lemuel is saying about this type of mama. She has finesse. Mm -hmm. And he highlights two things about her. First reason why he says she has finesse is because she's a great manager. Text says she watches over the affairs of her household. All right. In other words, she is constantly on a lookout in her household. Yeah. Her eyes, her eyes are like that eagle who's sitting perched high in a tree or a cliff of a mountain, and this eagle is watching everything, watching the forest, watching all the wilderness, and this eagle is waiting and waiting and waiting, and all of a sudden he or she swoops down and gets involved and takes over. That's what this mama is doing. Right. She's watching everything in the household. Right. She's watching to make sure there's some food in that house for breakfast. Yeah. She's watching to make sure there's going to be something in the house for dinner. Right. She's watching when she knows when the kids' school year starts. She knows when that school year ends. Yeah. Daddy may not know it. Mama knows, but she's watching this. She's yeah. watching for all the kids' performances at school, all the activities where they play sports and, and music they got placed. The PTA meets. Mama knows yeah. when all this stuff is happening because she is a manager. Right. She's watching for when those kids are growing out of their clothes and, and growing out of their shoes. Daddy may not be paying attention, but Mama's watching these things. Yeah. She's watching for when they got doctor's appointments. She's watching all this stuff. 
stuff. She has her eyes on everything. She is a manager with finesse. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't stop there. If she's married, she's watching out for her husband. All right. All right. Can, can I just invite you to the young's household, household for a few minutes? Yes. Yeah. My wife knows what all our bills are due. Uh -huh. yeah. And she pays them on time. Right. I don't ever recall getting an overdue notice from a bill collector or the utility company. She just makes sure these things are set up. And if they go to electronics, she makes sure that's set up. Yeah. She knows when our car insurance is about to expire. She knows when our car needs to get registered. She does our taxes. Right. She, she types up my own resume. She knows what to put in my resume. When I get invited to speak somewhere, she works on my bio. She sends my picture out. She takes care of all those things. When I travel out of town, can I tell you something? She knows exactly how to pack everything in my suitcase. She knows what I need. My wife is a manager of extraordinary and she does it with finesse. But in the text, not only is this mama a good manager, mm -hmm. the reason why she does it with finesse is because she's also a good housewife, or, or today's culture, we say a good homemaker. The text says that she does not eat the bread of idleness. She does not eat the bread of idleness. You know what that means? She ain't lazy. That's what it means. She's not sitting at home watching talk shows all day. She's not watching all the judge and courtroom shows all day and getting all involved and shouting at the TV all day. That's not what she's doing. This mama is keeping busy all for the sake of the household. She's not just managers because marriages manage. She is an implementer. She is implementing things that she has thought about. Now she's doing it. And she's making it happen. This mama, can I tell you, is making sure the kids don't go to school with their clothes all dirty. She's taking care of that. She's making sure that all their homework is done. She's sitting down with them, going over their papers and looking at their math problems. She's making sure the family has a warm dinner to eat every night that does not have McDonald's or Burger King on the back. She's making sure wherever it is that there's something for the family to eat that night. Can, can I just bring you right back into the young household again? My wife and I have been on a mission to redo our two boys' room that now they no longer in the house. And she returned one to the guest bedroom and the other one to my wife's office. But Pastor Young been busy. Busy at the job, busy at the church, but, but my wife has been the one taking care of these rooms. She's been running back and forth to Lowe's, getting all type of painting supplies and tape to tape off everything. She's been painting these rooms. She is the one who's been shampooing the carpet. She's the one who's been ordering new bed linen and new comforters and pillows for the mattress beds and everything. She's been putting everything in order. She is making it happen and she has finesse. Oh, and saints, when you look at your homes, I'm sure some of you have or have had these type of mamas who had finesse, who kept the house in order, who was able to turn those hand-me-downs and make them look good and be handy up. Now. She was able to stretch those pieces of chicken and toss in some gravy and some flour so that everyone could have something to eat. We want to appreciate those type of mamas. We want to thank those mamas and we want to thank the Lord. You say, preacher, why should we thank the Lord? Because the only way that she can do all of that is by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who helps our, makes our mama to be a manager. It's the Holy Spirit who humbles her to be a homemaker. It's the Holy Spirit who allows her to put her needs on the back burner while she takes care of her family on the front burner. This is what King Lemuel says. Who can find a woman like that? They are so hard to find. They are worth all the precious rubies. When King Solomon says, once you found her, you found a good thing. I tell you, we have a good thing. We don't want to be silent about it. We have a good mama. We don't want to be quiet. When you have a good thing, we want to talk about it. When you have a great thing, we want to brag about it. I tell you, my friends, it's okay to 
tell your mama thank you. Yeah. It's okay. Children in the household are indeed blessed. Yeah. 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 Glory. 
glory, glory. Yes, but I, I, couldn't, I, was, I was still struggling. What makes the mama bless? I know what makes the kids bless, but what makes the mama bless? And Paul, I had to go to Paul again. Paul helped me out. I went to Paul. He said, Preacher, you look at my letter to the, my friend Timothy. Mm -hmm. So I went to First Timothy. And Paul tells Timothy in chapter 4, he says, Glory of the blessed God. Glory of the blessed God. And Paul says, okay, don't stop there. Go on to chapter 6. And you go to chapter 6 and, 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 and verse 16. And he says, the blessed and only ruler. Paul's not talking about God. Okay. And both times, God, Paul says, God is blessed. Yeah, right. And Paul was basically saying, God is blessed, meaning he's happy and he's pleased simply because of who he is. Right. And his character. All right. Go ahead, Pastor. God has Jesus, joy Jesus. in himself mm -hmm. and all of creation mm -hmm. who reflects him. Mm -hmm. And that's why when we read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, when, when God saw that he was he had made and he said it was good, mm -hmm. yeah. what he was really saying was, I'm blessed. Yeah. All right. And as God's created being, St. Paul. We are blessed not because we got more money, more stuff, uh, more yeah, things. Uh -huh. The drug dealers got all those things, but uh -huh. they're not blessed. Yeah, man. Uh -huh. My friends, we are blessed when we imitate God's behavior or God's character. Uh -huh. Theologian Wayne Gruden, he explains, he says, whenever we find delight and happiness in all that is pleasing to God, we are blessed. Amen. So when we display the moral qualities of a character of God, mm -hmm. we are blessed. Amen. When we are patient like God, can I tell you, St. Paul, right. we are blessed. Yeah. When we love like God, we are blessed. Yeah. When we forgive like God, you yeah. and I, we yeah. are blessed. Yeah. And it takes yeah. every day the kids jump out of the bed and yeah. saw mama serving them breakfast or fixing their school lunch and not yeah. complaining. They saw mama giving them a kiss on the cheek yeah. before they went to school or praying with them at night before they went to bed. Yeah. And they knew that their mama was blessed. Yeah. They knew that mama was blessed because she was behaving just like God. Okay. She was loving all over the family. Yeah. And all I want to know this morning, St. Paul, is are there any blessed folks in the house today? Are there any blessed folks who are just so Are you behaving like Jesus? Are you thinking like the Lord? Yeah. Are you glad that you are a child of God? Yeah. Because if you are, then you are blessed. Yeah. Jesus tells me when he preached on the mountain, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Yeah. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Yeah. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Yeah. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those who are pure in heart. Who are peacemakers.
Not how much you got in a bank account. Not how green and strong or good looking or anything. How big a house or nice or not. That's not what makes a blessing. And you got folks breaking all kind of laws and all kind of illegal money in the bank in the pocket. And they got a lot of stuff, but they are not blessed. And this old mama scrubbing the floors. They said, Mama, you a blessed mama. That's what they were saying. Let me give you one more. The text tells us that, that mama has finesse. Mm -hmm. The children tells us mm -hmm. that she's blessed. Mm -hmm. But then her husband speaks in and says, I know that's right. she's better than all the rest. <laughs> she's better than all the rest. Her husband seems to be to work through his text. It's like he's listening to all what's been said. Mm -hmm. He's listening to the testimony of his children. And finally, he speaks up because he has a chance to reflect over his life. All right, all right. And he sees that all that his wife has done for him. Mm -hmm. And basically he tells her, he says, baby, I've seen some women do some good things. All right, yeah. But you are head and shoulders above all oh, those women. That's what he's saying. The late, the late of us, Jackie Gleason, he used to have a TV show called The Honeymooners. Yes, yes. It came on years ago, you know, years ago, yes, black and white. Yes, and he, he would do things and crazy things and mess things up and, and he'd get mad at his wife Alice and, and, and she always be patient with him. They shout back and forth, but she always somehow able to stand by him and help him out. And, and at the end, she, she's there helping him, making it work through, work, working through. And at the end of the show, he always said the same similar line. He said, baby, you're the greatest. <laughs> that makes it. That's what this husband was telling his wife. He was saying, baby, you're the greatest. Yeah. Can I invite you back into the young house so one last time they don't want to push you back out? <laughs> when I first met my wife years ago, years ago, I didn't have any type of college degree. I didn't have any money. I was in the military, but I didn't have nothing going on for me. That was me. But she had her MBA. She graduated, graduated from Atlanta University, which is Clark Atlanta now down in Georgia. She had a good job, and she was just doing her doggone thing. She was making her own money. But somehow, she decided to be with this brother. I guess she may have thought that it had a bright future. And so, you know, I started doing it. I got busy in school. I ended up getting my two-year degree, my associate's degree. She and I were dating at the time, but she took off work to show up at my graduation. I'm, and I'm proud as a peacock, peacock proud. I'm holding my so two year certificate, and she's right there, the woman I'm dating, and she's right there. She got her six year degree, but I got my two year, but I'm feeling pretty good, and she's right there cheering me on. And then I went and pursued my bachelor's degree, and you know what? She was right there with me. Stayed up late at night and reviewing all my papers and looking over my assignments and making sure that everything proofreading and, and checking everything. This is what she was doing. And then when I graduated, she was right there at that ceremony. Praise God. Praise God. And when I went out to my first master's degree, and I think I got my second master's degree, she was watched, even while she was raising the young children, taking care of the household, she still made a point to stay up late at night to review all my papers. I, I'll get up early in the morning and read all my papers and proofread just so I wouldn't be late to get them into the professor. All right. And all right. then, when I decided to go after my doctorate degree, and I'm traveling back and forth to Sioux Falls Seminary in South Dakota, being gone for a week at a time. She would first make sure all my stuff was packed up and get loaded in the car before I left. And once I got on the road, she would stay home and take care of the household, take care of three young children. And she never complained while I was doing all this schoolwork because she was helping me and she was blessing me. When I graduated, uh -huh. she was right there as well. And so like the husband in text, I can speak the same way. Don't get mad at me, St. Paul. But there is no woman better than my wife. She's better than all the rest. This is why Ruth took care of They took care of Naomi. Because when Ruth saw Naomi, she knew there was no one better. 
King David took care of his mama even while he was on the run from King Saul because he knew there was none better. And can I tell you about Jesus? Jesus hung on that cross on Calvary. He looked down at John the Apostle and he said, John, you take care of my mama. And John probably said, why? And Jesus said, I can imagine because she's blessed and highly favored. And she better than all the rest. John, you take care of my mama and she'll become your mama. And I can only imagine St. Paul. When Jesus rose from the grave on that Sunday morning, he went to go see his mama and just make sure that everything was all right. And St. Paul, bless you. If you have a mama like that, if you have a big mama like that, a godly mama like that, then you should be able to say, there is no one better. She's better than all the rest. You should feel that way, St. Paul. Can I tell you about your mama? I work out of your household, and I'm going to get all nosy. Mama, she wiped your nose. Your mama, she wiped your tears. Because it's the right thing to do. And because she took care of you. Right. God bless you, saints. 